Hello, and welcome to Cal, or welcome to this virtual version of Cal Day. I'm Jeff Boker. I'm the chair of the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, EECS, affectionately known as EECS. And what I'd like to do in this presentation is to uh, give you an introduction to uh, the EECS department, and in particular, the EECS major within the College of Engineering at Berkeley. Um, there's also a closely related major of computer science in the Letters and Science uh, College. Uh, I'll mention a little bit about that one and what its differences are with EECS. There's a separate presentation being given by my colleagues John De Niro and John Canney about the LNS, Letters and Science, computer science program. Uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you some uh, material about what the EECS major is like. Uh, what our program is like, what the opportunities are for students in the major, and uh, what probably you're also very interested in is what are the prospects like for graduates of this department. So without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, show you some slides. Right. Okay. So, um, First of all, let me uh, start out by congratulating you, those of you who are uh, new admits to our department in, uh, and uh, are trying to decide whether or not you should uh, come to Cal. Uh, that's what this talk is all about. The answer is easy, you should come to Cal. It's a great program, it's a great department, it's a great place to spend uh, four years or so. And uh, we really are very proud of uh, the uh, careers that our students are able to have once they uh, move on from Berkeley. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Okay, so uh, as an overview of the department. So first of all, I've got to tell you about our mission statement. Our mission is uh, threefold. First of all, it's uh, the creation of knowledge. Uh, so we're a research university. Uh, we have a very, very vibrant, active, and world-leading uh, research program uh, in electrical engineering and computer science. So that's the first part of our mission is to create new knowledge and disseminate it out into the world, uh, all the way from the basic fundamentals of our field uh, out to uh, practical real-world technologies that are being uh, practiced in the industry today. Uh, second, um, education. So we are a teaching uh, organization and our job is to educate. And our job, as we see it, is to educate future leaders. We are uh, hoping that you'll come and join us, go through our program and go out there and become the leaders in academia, government, industry, and uh, entrepreneurial, uh, the entrepreneurial world, startup companies and, and so forth. And last but not least, uh, a, a very high value here at Berkeley is service to society. Uh, we believe that uh, our mission is to do the first two uh, with uh, the first two parts of the mission, always with a strong view on uh, what we can do to most benefit uh, the broader cross section of society from the local to the international. And we always keep in mind a deep awareness of our responsibilities. Uh, as human beings to uh, do the best for society and behave in, in, uh, ethically. Now, we've been pretty good at this. Uh, you can see some uh, summary of various rankings of different programs by US News and World Report. I won't go through this in detail. What you can see is that uh, Berkeley EECS ranks in the top three uh, we typically share and, and bounce back and forth from year to year between MIT, Stanford, and CMU, that's Carnegie Mellon, uh, in both electrical engineering and uh, computer science. Um, and uh, it's our strategy uh, to achieve this excellence by getting the very best faculty and students and really giving them the tools to go out, create, disseminate new knowledge and to uh, have impact on society by translating that knowledge into technologies that make a difference in people's lives. So a little bit about uh, Berkeley at, uh, at East at Berkeley today. 
we're a pretty good sized department. We have uh, a little bit over 110 regular faculty members, including 30 very active emeriti. That's a fancy word for retired faculty. Uh, but they remain active, uh, continue to uh, supervise graduate students. Uh, they're retired from teaching is really uh, what it amounts to. Um, we have uh, about 740 graduate students in the program as of this year, 550 of whom are in a PhD program, and about 190 students in uh, our two major uh, master's degree programs. In addition to that, we have a very large undergraduate program with over 3,000, well over 3,000 undergraduate students. And that includes uh, about uh, 1,600 in the College of Engineering, the ECS program that leads to a Bachelor of Science degree, and that's the degree that I'm here mainly to talk about. And in addition to that, a slightly larger number now in our Letters and Science, Computer Science program, leads to a Bachelor of Arts degree. That's the one that will be described in a little bit more uh, detail in the talk that I've already mentioned uh, by John De Niro and John Canny. So check that one out as well. Now, we're a big department. We take up a lot of space. We have uh, occupation in uh, at least these six different buildings on the Berkeley campus. Corey Hall, which is the home of the Electrical Engineering Division. Soda Hall is the home of the Computer Science Division. And, but we're overflowing these buildings. And we now have uh, spilled out and occupy uh, a full building in this, a full floor in this very large building called Berkeley Way West that's closer to downtown. Uh, we have occupation in Sutaja Dai Hall, which is uh, literally right next door to Corey Hall. Jacobs Hall across the street is a wonderful center uh, and institute for design innovation. And the Simons Institute. Um, is uh, a very special uh, institute for uh, theoretical computer science that has its own building in the center of campus uh, called uh, Cal uh, Calvin uh, Lab. Now, I'm, uh, I really love talking about uh, Berkeley EECS. We are a virtually uh, unique department really in the whole world in that we are a fully integrated electrical engineering computer science program. We don't have, we, we do divide in two divisions. We have two buildings. That's just because we can't all fit in one building. Um, but really what we have is a fully integrated and seamless program and curriculum that spans all the way from sort of the most fundamental electronics, semiconductors, electrons, holes, transistors, uh, integrated circuits, and so forth, um, all the way through, uh, you know, through an integrated uh, information technology spectrum that goes up to data databases, uh, scientific computing, programming, artificial intelligence, and so on. And 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 a, and a seamless. We don't try to draw a line. We have a seamless uh, spectrum that, as we go from the, the fundamentals of the de technology all the way up to large scale. And here is the very rich uh, middle of, the, uh, of this spectrum with things like computer architecture, uh, computer vision and imaging systems, uh, cyber physical systems, um, and uh, computational biology and biosystems, robotics. These are some of the uh, exciting areas that really don't categorize as uh, either EE or CS. And uh, there are very few departments uh, in the world that uh, even try to do this. Uh, we think we uh, really have it down, and we have a, uh, a seamless faculty that spans this entire space with a lot of collaboration and interaction uh, all the way up and down this uh, spectrum. Now, I've mentioned already the uh, bachelor's programs that we offer. Uh, the one I'm talking about is the Bachelor of Science program in the College of Engineering, uh, which is called the EECS or EECS. And the Bachelor of Arts degree in computer science that's offered for students that are accepted and admitted into the College of Letters and Science. Now, both of these programs have essentially the same coursework within the major. 
and I'm going to describe to you in a minute the kinds of courses that you can take uh, within uh, the department. The difference is really primarily in the emphasis in the outside of the department uh, courses that you would take. The EECS program has a somewhat greater emphasis on the sciences and math, physics, uh, whereas the Bachelor of Arts program in Letters and Science has a little bit greater emphasis on the humanities and social sciences in those required courses outside the major that you will need to take. I'm going to continue on to focus primarily on the EECS major. Now, um, first of all, uh, all of the students in the major take these six uh, lower division courses. Lower division refers to your uh, freshman and sophomore year. Uh, and I'll, these are just some numbers for you right now. I'm going to describe these in a little bit more detail on the, on the next couple of slides. But uh, there are these six required courses. Uh, two of them, 16A and B, focus very much on the devices and hardware side. Uh, 61A and B are software related computer science courses. And two in the middle, 61C is machine structures. Uh, so what's the hardware that your uh, computer uh, runs those uh, software on? And then 70 is a uh, discrete math and probability uh, course, which uh, everybody really, uh, you know, span, under, is the fundamentals underneath both the, the hardware and the software. Now, once you get through these uh, six lower division courses, the entire upper division is available to you. So um, uh, all of our majors, and this is, by the way, this is true for both the uh, EECS major and the computer science majors. The, they all take the same six lower div courses. And in the upper div, uh, we only require you to take 20 units of upper division EECS classes. And you can take them in any of these areas which span, again, this spectrum that, um, this, in this case, I have the hardware on the right-hand side, power systems, physical electronics, that means semiconductors and transistors and the like, uh, lasers, all the way through things like control systems, robotics, signal processing, integrated circuits, computer architecture, as I told you, is kind of close to the middle, communica communications and networking, and over here on the other side, things like artificial intelligence, theoretical computer science, databases, and so forth. And you can pick and choose whatever you like from these uh, areas uh, for a minimum of 20 units of upper division EECS. So you could take some courses over here. You could take some courses over here. You can take all your courses in one of these areas. We leave the uh, choice up to you to decide what you're most interested in and how to put together your overall upper division part of your major program. So lots of flexibility and a full spectrum of access to the entire uh, EECS uh, um, rainbow, really, of, uh, of topics. In addition to that, I mentioned uh, we have other requirements in science and math. Uh, we do ask you to take some breadth courses outside the department, as well as uh, ethics. Now, a little bit more information on those uh, lower division classes. As I already said, 16A and B, EECS 16A and B, are the uh, really the hardcore hardware-oriented class classes, uh, designing information desi uh, devices and systems. On the uh, CS side, 61A and B are really our hardcore uh, software courses, uh, structure of computer programs and data structures. And then, uh, as I said, in the middle, 61C is machine structures. So that's kind of where the hardware and the software meet, the design of how you uh, put together uh, the digital system that is a computer uh, and uh, how, you, how that's programmed and uh, how it executes instructions of a program. Uh, and then finally, the discrete math and probability, which is some fundamental mathematics that are really needed uh, across the whole spectrum of EECS. Now, uh, we put a high hallmark, a high value on the hallmark of collaborative learning. 
and lots of our courses, not just the upper division courses, but the lower division courses are very much uh, hands-on with laboratory components to those classes, almost all of our classes. And uh, many of them, in fact, most of them have project-oriented assignments in which students work together in teams to uh, com com uh, complete laboratory uh, projects and assignments. Now, just a few numbers that I think are of interest to you. Um, the um, first year retention rate in engineering, it's 97% uh, uh, within the whole College of Engineering and uh, similar numbers in the department. So we are not in the business of using our first year, our freshman program, as some kind of filter that's intended to uh, weed out uh, students. We try to keep everybody in, and include everybody in the, in the program and help everybody get through. Uh, that's much higher than the national average for engineering programs, which have a retention rate of only about 62%. Uh, our program works well and students get through it. Average time to degree of less than four years. That's because a lot of students come in with advanced placement or take courses in the summer, although that's not required. Uh, the four-year graduation rate is uh, 94%. Uh, that's for the whole College of Engineering and the EECS department is, and the ECS program is right in line with that. With an average GPA of the graduating EECS students of uh, just a hair under 3.5. Actually, 11.5% uh, of our EECS undergrads uh, managed to graduate with a double major. That means uh, both EECS and some other uh, topic. That could be another uh, engineering, or it could be a science, like EECS and physics, or EECS and math, or statistics, or uh, psychology, for that matter. Now, I want to emphasize uh, what a, uh, a very high value we put on teaching. Uh, really, this is a value for the whole Berkeley campus and we take this to heart in EECS. Over 96% of our courses are taught by uh, regular faculty members, um, and our professors teach both undergrad and grad courses. It's not like we have the professors teaching grad classes and uh, all TAs or instructors teaching at the undergrad level. Our regular faculty are heavily engaged in, in both. And we take seriously the evaluations, the feedback that we get from students. At the end of every class, there's a survey of the students. And um, those survey results are considered very important in the evaluation of our faculty for promotions and uh, salary treatment. Now, um, one of the things we do is post the results of those st uh, student evaluations online for all students to be able to see and uh, they can use that information in uh, how they choose what courses they wanna take. So you can see here, it's a little hard to make out the details, but uh, it shows uh, this Professor King and a list of the different courses that she's taught over time and uh, the ratings that she's gotten in most of those courses, all green, she's a pretty good teacher. Most of our faculty are uh, really excellent, excellent teachers. I'll talk a little bit more about our teaching excellence in uh, 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 next. So first of all, within the department, we have a number of uh, teaching awards that we give uh, to the best uh, uh, faculty teachers on an annual basis. Uh, that's just within the department. Now, the whole Berkeley campus has a uh, program of uh, teaching awards. Uh, the Berkeley campus distinguished teaching award uh, is a very prestigious award, and it's, uh, it's been won by uh, this, uh, in recent years, by this group of uh, six faculty. I show you their photos and their names. Um, in addition to that, there are two campus-wide awards for uh, faculty mentorship of grad students, and four of our faculty have recently won uh, these awards for grad student mentoring. Here are some of our most recently um, uh, new hires, our recent new hires. Uh, you can see here the, the eight most recent hires we've made in just a couple of years. Uh, fresh, eager, and excited young faces. 
and uh, they span uh, the whole range of areas within the department uh, from integrated circuits uh, through uh, theoretical computer science, uh, image analysis, databases, uh, computational biology. Uh, we've got three more faculty. These uh, uh, fresh faces here uh, are uh, going to be joining us in uh, fall of 2020. Um, covering areas of programming languages, databases, uh, computer vision, and uh, machine learning. Now, um, I want to just continue a few more words on uh, interaction between faculty and students. In addition to our courses, our faculty are available to our students. Every faculty member has weekly office hours where students can drop in and uh, talk to the faculty, not just about their classes, but uh, career goals, uh, internship opportunities, uh, undergraduate research opportunities. I'll say a word about that on the next slide. Uh, every student meets uh, once a semester with a faculty advisor uh, that um, helps them figure out what courses to take in the following semester. Students get to select uh, their advisor rather than assign you to an advisor. We actually have all the advisors just post their hours and students can sign up for faculty advising with whoever they choose. We also have a number of other informal kinds of venues for students to interact with faculty, uh, lunch meetings, social hours, and, and so on. Uh, undergraduate research. So as I mentioned, a big part of our uh, activity in the department is uh, advanced research. Uh, mostly uh, that's uh, the, um, being carried out by uh, PhD students in collaboration with their uh, faculty advisors, but we have uh, well over a third of our undergrads working on any given time on uh, research projects together with the grad students and the faculty. So as an undergrad, you can get into those laboratories and uh, work on some of the exciting research projects that are going on in the department. And uh, a great benefit of that is that uh, you get to work side by side with the graduate students which really gives you a bird's eye view of what it's like to be in grad school and uh, helps you to really uh, decide whether or not you think that might actually be uh, for you. Now we have some, uh, a number of mechanisms that help students to find opportunities to get involved in research. One example is uh, called Beehive, that's a website with um, uh, postings uh, inviting students to uh, apply for undergraduate research opportunities in different areas. Here's a posting for chemical sensing technology. Here's another posting for uh, a program developer uh, to work with a, uh, uh, to work on a, on a programming project. Now I wanna say a few words uh, about the other kinds of support that we have for our students. We have a large center for student affairs. Uh, these are full-time staff. These are not faculty. These are folks who divide, uh, devote their career exclusively to advising and helping students uh, get through the program. Uh, they're experts in our programs. They're experts in uh, a variety of aspects of the program from uh, enrollment, uh, scholarships, um, course advising, uh, and so on. And uh, here are their uh, faces. If we were uh, all together in our usual Cal Day program, these folks would all be in the room. I'd ask them to stand up so you could see them and go and talk to them uh, personally uh, after the talk and uh, ask, ask your questions. Unfortunately, we can't do that uh, this year, but uh, I'm going to give you information in a little bit about how you can reach out and uh, make contact with some of these folks. Uh, they will be conducting uh, a, a question and answer uh, presentation that's a companion to this one that you can uh, uh, sign up for and watch uh, a little bit later on. So uh, what I just uh, was describing to you is the Department Center for Student Affairs Advisors and these are the sort of the areas that they help out with, helping you with figuring out your courses and your scheduling coordinating, they coordinate and help students, uh, you know, get hooked up with uh, their faculty advisors. They help us run the honors program, internship programs, um, undergraduate scholarships. Uh, they, they help you uh, find the, and apply for those, et cetera, admissions to grad school. 
the College of Engineering has a uh, companion office of engineering student services that provides um, complementary services to students, um, tutoring and review sessions, uh, advising for the whole college uh, program. Uh, they offer workshops in skills, leadership, and professional development. We have local counseling and psychological services available to students, and um, and these uh, folks also help out with our student clubs, uh, the student organizations. So lots of support that uh, we have available for students to take advantage of. Uh, on top of that, we have a large number of student groups. Those are clubs that are run by, organized, and led uh, by students. And um, here's a photo of uh, you know, a meeting of the Association of Women in EECS. Um, uh, there's a maker space which serves as a home for a number of project-based student organizations. Uh, here's a list of, of uh, some of the uh, organizations that we have. Uh, these are, you know, sort of academically oriented programs that help students out in the in their programs, and they, uh, you know, serve a, a number of different kinds of students: the Society of Women Engineers. Um, uh, out in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, OSTEM, the Black Engineering and S uh, Science Students Association, the Hispanic Engineers and Scientists. These are all clubs that are uh, open to all, by the way. Um, in addition to that, here are some other kinds of clubs, hacker clubs, robotics, unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, um, theoretical computer science. And even this is just a sampling. We have dozens of these uh, student groups that do a whole variety of things and cater to students with all sorts of uh, specialized interests. I mentioned the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation. This is a building which is uh, really doesn't have any faculty offices or research labs. It's completely devoted to design studios for teaching and collaboration. Uh, fabrication labs like maker spaces to support undergraduate student experiences. Uh, also undergrad lab classes are taught in here. Uh, really on human-centered design, prototyping and, and the like. Uh, it's an exciting uh, building. There are some really exciting uh, fun classes that are taught in there. We have some beautiful uh, studio spaces that uh, are uh, used for that inside this building. Now I wanna say a word or two about our honors program. Uh, this uh, provides uh, a, a special uh, program for students uh, who are interested and are um, uh, satisfy certain entry requirements. Students typically enter in the in the uh, thir at the end of their third year, um, and uh, these uh, students in this program uh, get a select an academic concentration outside of EECS to broaden their um, program. They, uh, there's a special faculty advisor who is allocated for these uh, students. We help facilitate them getting into undergrad research. You get a notation on your transcript, and there's a variety of social events uh, for the honors program. There's also master's programs. I want to mention in particular our fifth year master's degree program, which is for uh, exclusively uh, for our own undergraduates. So this is an opportunity after you get through your four years to stick around for one additional year and graduate with a master's degree. Um, students typically apply for this uh, in their uh, junior year and with a minimum GPA, uh, and you have to establish a relationship with a each faculty member who will be your advisor because there's a, a project that's um, a full one year project that's required in order to uh, complete this program. And it's a great uh, opportunity and a great deal for motivated students. And uh, a lot of companies uh, are re really uh, uh, pay a lot of attention and hire a lot of these fifth year master's degree students. Now, um, what can you do with uh, a Berkeley EECS degree? I wanna just go through you know, some of the different branches that uh, our students follow uh, after they graduate. Uh, many go on to graduate school or a professional school like law or business, um, et cetera. Uh, some graduate and go directly out to work in the industry, uh, the information technology industry, biotechnology, semiconductor industry. Uh, nowadays, 
Uh, they go off into all kinds of places, uh, like working on uh, robotics, uh, self-driving cars, uh, you name it. Some students join a consulting firm. Some go out and start their own company, and I'll have a little bit more to say about entrepreneurship opportunities uh, and support that we have here on the Berkeley campus. Uh, some companies that uh, have been startups that came out of Berkeley are in the area of multimedia electronics, graphics, animation, music, uh, software design. Here's an example of a company that designed software to help children and adults learn to read that came out of our department. Wireless sensors for monitoring health and the environment. Uh, tiny robots for medical applications and so on and so on. Here's an important number. If you only remember one number uh, or one fact from this talk, you'll probably remember this one. The average starting salary for our uh, graduates after four years is 115,000 annual. And uh, that means that uh, quite a few of the salaries are well above that. Um, and uh, really not that many uh, below. So this is uh, kind of an average. And uh, you go out there and uh, whatever one of these pathways that you choose, our students are going out and making a big impact. And uh, as we like to say, uh, changing the world. Now, a few more words about entrepreneurship, uh, sorry, about companies. Um, we have a, uh, an internship fair uh, every year in the fall. And we have uh, 30 to 40 companies that show up uh, and um, uh, are interviewing students for summer internships. And here you just see uh, you know, some logos from uh, some of the more well-known companies, but we have, like I say, 30 to 40 who uh, show up and uh, are actively recruiting students uh, for internship opportunities. And for most of these companies, uh, an, a very high percentage of the interns that they hire during the summer uh, get offers for uh, full-time employment uh, after graduation. Uh, now I want to say something about entrepreneurship. Uh, as I say, we have a very active uh, track record of uh, faculty and students uh, starting up companies, uh, over 118 in the, re in the recent years, and 11 of them have uh, successfully uh, been uh, launched uh, public offerings, IPOs. A uh, number of our companies, uh, co uh, the companies that were started by our uh, department uh, have been getting heavy uh, investments from venture capital. There's a program on campus called the Baker Fellows Program that uh, is really there to uh, try to support and encourage faculty to uh, start innovative research with a focus on uh, projects that hold commercial promise. Uh, there's a list of faculty in the department that have won this uh, fellowship, Carmina, Maharbis, Arias, Waller, et cetera. And I think almost all of these faculty, after holding this fellow, went on to, in fact, start companies. And we have a number of other uh, scholarship programs that are uh, intended to try to provide development and opportunities for our students to um, engage in entrepreneurship, um, like the Excel Scholars Program, which is founded by an EECS uh, alum and uh, provides a lot of mentoring and uh, encouragement for students who win this scholarship to get involved in entrepreneurship. Now, our graduates go on to do all kinds of things and, and make, a, as I say, change the world and make a big impact. I just wanna cite a few uh, very notable uh, examples here. Uh, this gentleman here is Gary May. Uh, he graduated in, uh, from our department in 1991. And he is currently uh, the chancellor of University of California at Davis and uh, is making a big impact there and uh, making us really proud. Uh, over here in the center of this group, this guy really likes to hang out with students. His name is Steve Wozniak. And uh, maybe you've heard of Steve. He is the co-founder of Apple Computer uh, together with Steve Jobs. And uh, he's a big friend and supporter of the department, comes around a lot, loves to hang out with students, as you can see here in this photo. Uh, this uh, uh, woman here is uh, Shafi Goldwasser. Shafi is currently the director of the Simons Institute for Theoretical Computer Science. 
and she's a winner of the Turing Award, which is the uh, what people like to call the Nobel Prize for computer science. Uh, Alfred Nobel uh, didn't leave an endowment for computer science. He wouldn't have known uh, what a computer is. Uh, but um, the Turing uh, Award is, is, is named after a very famous um, a pioneer of, uh, co of uh, code breaking in World War II, Alan Turing. And uh, Shafi is uh, one of several winners uh, of the Turing Award actually on our faculty. So I want to just summarize uh, with the last couple of slides just to um, you know conclude. Uh, look, I hope I've uh, tried to communicate that uh, Berkeley ECS is a really exciting and a dynamic uh, place and a community. Um, we are uh, uh, pioneers in research and making a big impact on the technology uh, and the cutting edge research uh, leads to a cutting edge undergrad curriculum. So uh, you'll be taking courses from those faculty who are actually making real world impact uh, in, uh, in research and pushing the field forward. And that, that, uh, that flows right into our uh, courses, uh, even at the undergrad level. Uh, I really tried hard to impress upon you how, you, how our unique undergraduate program offers uh, a high degree of flexibility for students uh, who can, you can take whatever courses you like. We have a broad uh, spectrum available of uh, EE and CS, uh, which uh, you can pick and choose from uh, as is your taste. And uh, our courses have a strong emphasis on uh, teamwork and project oriented uh, learning. And we also offer a, um, uh, a wide variety of research opportunities for students to get involved directly in that research that I was just bragging about. And so we have a strong dedication to educating students, uh, having close ties to industry and making a big impact on industry, and to have a culture and a workplace environment in the department that is uh, supportive and encourages students to uh, you know, realize their dreams and goals. So uh, this would be the time in the talk where I would um, uh, point you to the advising staff that uh, I showed you the photos. Uh, they are still available for you. And um, for additional information, uh, access to uh, frequently asked questions, uh, or to be able to set up a, an appointment to speak directly with one of those uh, advisors, you can go to this website. And uh, that will lead you to uh, a path to be able to uh, get more information or, as I say, uh, make an appointment to talk to a, 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 an advisor in person. Um, there will also be um, a separate presentation uh, for uh, question and answer that you might have uh, flowing out of this presentation. And look for that on the program uh, for the virtual uh, Cal Week. And I hope you'll uh, participate in that as well. So uh, with that, I'd like to wrap up. I wanna once again, congratulate you. Those of you who are our uh, admits, who are uh, watching this presentation to get as much information as you can to help make your decision. Uh, I hope I've convinced you that uh, this is really a great place to be. It's a great program, a great place to get an education and to launch a, uh, a really, uh, uh, excellent career of leadership and success. So with that, I'll stop. And uh, again, um, uh, this is pre-recorded, so we're not going to answer questions here. But uh, please go to the uh, presentation that will um, be there to uh, answer your questions that come up uh, out of this one. Uh, so thank you again. And uh, the end of every talk at Berkeley always ends with our motto, Go Bears! Bye-bye.